to start with some centering today, friends. We are going to work our meditation muscles a little bit. Are there any meditators in the room? A couple? Okay. Yeah? Ish? Sort of? Okay. Well, we're going to start by, this is a short meditation. We're only talking like two to three minutes. So if you're new to it, it's an e we're easing in. But I'm going to invite you to get comfortable where you are. So that can be fat feet flat on the floor. If you want to be crisscross applesauce, you are welcome to be. I invite you to feel the back of your chair if you need that support, or sit on the edge of it with your spine elongated. And just start focusing on your breath, taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And in through your nose. And out through your mouth. And if you haven't already, slowly soften your gaze or close your eyes. And just focus on your breath. We are resting this morning. Rest. R is for relax your attention. Relax your attention. Release what has been holding you back. What has been worrying you. Relax your attention. E is for exhale all striving. You do not have to do anything in this moment. You just have to be. There is nothing to strive for. or sense the silence. Surrender to the silence. And if a noise comes into your purview, give it a little attention and just let it go. Let it keep moving. Surrender to the silence. T is for tune into awareness. Tune in to what is before you in this moment. Trust what the Holy Spirit is up to. Okay. 
the Spirit for this moment of rest. And as you are willing and able, slowly opening your eyes and returning to the larger group. How did that feel for our newbie meditators today? Nice. Go to stop for a second. Slow down. I know I need time to stop and slow down. Well, friends, today we are, our theme is the companionship of solitude and rest. The companionship of solitude and rest. But before we dive into that, we need to nuance those things a little bit. Because when we gathered two weeks ago, this group, one of the wilderness moments that a friend brought up was loneliness. Has anyone here ever felt lonely before? Yeah. I reckon, I guess, in the last few years of life, there have been a lot of lonely moments. And according to a Meta Gallup poll, nearly one in four adults feel lonely. Nearly one in four adults feel lonely. And the, the age range that had the highest percentage of loneliness were actually our young adults from 19 to 29 at 27%. Our young adults feel the most lonely in this country. And I assumed it was gonna be our senior citizens, ages 65 and up, but actually had the lowest rates of loneliness. I know, shocking, right? But I bring up loneliness because church community can be a bomb for that. As sociologist and Episcopalian and fellow Southerner, a Texan, will forgive her, um, <laughs> wrote, you are imperfect, you are wired for struggle, but you are worthy of love and belonging. We all need belonging, we all need community, we all need connection and relationship. We are hardwired for it, we do not exist without it. And yet, there's a flip side to loneliness. There's a nuance to it. Because Jesus, if we remember our gospel reading from the first Sunday in Lent, Jesus went out into the wilderness alone. He didn't take any of his friends with him. He didn't hang out with his cousin John the Baptist. He was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to be alone for 40 days and 40 nights. He was vulnerable. He was exposed to the elements. He was with his own thoughts for that long. I don't know about you, but 40 days with my own thoughts seems like a really long time. Maybe not for some of the more introverted people in the room. And I wonder, and this is just an inquiry, this is not uh, Sarah speaking some orthodox truths, but I wonder how much of the temptation in the wilderness was actually internal was psychological? Was it outward and physical, or was this some stuff that was going on in Jesus' own mind? But I want us to talk about loneliness versus solitude today. Because what we just heard is Jesus goes intentionally alone into the wilderness for solitude. But that holds a different weight different connotation, different meaning than loneliness. So I'm going to invite you to break into small groups of three to four people, and we're just going to sh briefly share, for you, is there a difference between loneliness and solitude? And if so, what is it? Is there a difference between loneliness and solitude? And if so, what is it? So groups of three to four, preferably not with someone you came in the room with. Or spend just, just two to three minutes, friends.
And Thomas Merton, some of you may know him, another theologian said, solitude is not something you must hope for in the future. Rather, it is a deepening of the present. And unless you look for it in the present, you will never find it. But as we've talked about the last few weeks, we live in a culture that doesn't really value being in the present, right? We live in a culture that's either worrying about what's gonna be happening in the future or sitting in regret of the past. And yet, the only place that we can have a relationship with God is in the present moment, right? That's where connection, and we were talking about with loneliness, connection comes from being present. And yet we live in a society that doesn't encourage that practice because I don't know about any of you, but who here has struggled with burnout before, <laughs> right? Have we ever been exhausted from work, from our family, from all of our responsibilities? Anyone been exhausted by social media and being on a device all the time? Yeah? And have we ever, once we finally pause, I don't know about you, but I had this tendency about five, ten years ago that every time I went on vacation, I got sick the first day I was on vacation. Because it was like push, 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 go, 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 grind, 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 and then I stopped, and my body responded to that stuff. Or have you ever gone on vacation or a retreat and all you can do is sleep the whole time? Right? You're like, oh, I have all these fun excursions. Planned. Just kidding. We're, we're napping today. Right? Because we live in a culture that does not value rest. And my friends, lest we forget it, rest is actually mandated in our scripture. Rest is mandated. It is commanded. I love this translation of Genesis 2, chapter 2, verses 2 through 3 from the voice. On the seventh day, with the canvas of the cosmos completed, God paused from God's labor and rested. Thus God blessed day seven and made it special. An open time for pause and restoration a sacred zone of Sabbath keeping because God rested from all the work God had done in creation that day. So God did all this work in creating the beauty of the cosmos and the earth, this fragile earth, our island home we dwell upon, and then God rested? So why do we as human beings think we're not supposed to rest then? Our God modeled it for us. And even in the gospel accounts, you've probably heard more than a time or two that Jesus went away to pray, that he tried to get away from the mass of crowds. Maybe Jesus was an introvert, so God bless the introverts in this room. <laughs> There's an introvert over there. And if you heard in today's reading from Exodus, the Old Testament reading for the day, we heard the Ten Commandments. And it said, honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor the day of rest and keep it holy. But how much are we resting on? How much are we actually slowing down and showing up with God? Some of us have been forced to rest. Maybe it's been retirement. Or maybe we had a surgery that's forcing us to rest, right? But it's antithetical to how we've been programmed in our current cultural context. We live in a daily grind. But as people of faith, we live a life that is countercultural to the world that we see. And that's hard to keep those boundaries. It's difficult to rest. So quickly, this is a, like two minutes. We're not going to be able to do all these questions. How do you rest? And what does it feel like when you rest? So in your same little groups, how do you rest? What do you do for rest? And what do you feel like when you rest? Okay? Two minutes? 
So Trisha Hersey recommend her book, It Is Radical, Will Change Your Life, It Changed Mine. She says we must believe we are worthy of rest. We don't have to earn it. It is our birthright. It is one of our most ancient and primal needs. It's our birthright, y'all. We weren't created to multitask. We were not created to multitask. I was talking with my dear friend Ellie about that the other day. We were not created to multitask. Um, friends, we are going to end with a little rest, but I'm going to have to jet at the end of it. So Nancy, would you close us with prayer when we're done with this meditation? It's about 10 minutes, so you're good. Okay. But, and if you got to go pick up kiddos, I get it. We have a short form period, friends. And we're going to do a rest called chair yoga. Has anyone ever done chair yoga before? So you might need to make some space for you. You, might, you can scoot chairs out of your way. You can spread out. And I just want to say that every body is beautiful. Every body is holy. And if there's something you can't do, that is okay. Right? Give yourself the grace to just rest in that moment. Do what you can. Listen to your body. And be present with God. So we're going to do some chair yoga, friends, because why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So today we will be doing chair yoga. So it is extremely beneficial for those people who are sitting for too long, especially those people uh, who go to the office and sit for long hours. Plus, if you are suffering from any injuries or any body issues, and if you are unable to get onto your mat, you can stay fit and healthy even using your own chair. So let's get started. If you are leaning back onto your chair, you may come a little forward, try to adjust your spine so that you get to sit tall. Keep your spine straight, completely erect. And you can place your palms on your thighs. You can rest them. And let's start with gentle head movements up and down. So, as your head goes up, you need to inhale. As it comes down, breathe out. Take very slow and gentle breath. And left and right. Take care of your breathing pattern. It should be smooth, completely smooth. And from here itself, let's start our lateral movement of our neck, ear to the shoulders, and the rotations from the right side. So as your head goes up from the right side, you need to inhale. As it comes down from the left, you need to breathe out. Go very slow and gentle. And let's reverse the direction now. From left to right. Make sure that your spine is straight, your feet are rested on your thighs. You are just moving your neck. Try to keep a very gentle smile on your face. And let's come back to the base position. You can lift your arms in front. And let's start with the wrist rotations. So you have to make a fist and start rotating the fist externally. And let's reverse the direction now. Internal rotation of our fist. We are opening up the entire body, one part after the other. And let's relax our arms on your thighs. So let's start moving our shoulders, backward rotation of your shoulders. 
So, as you lift your shoulders up, they should come a little closer to your ears. And now the forward rotation. And let's relax our shoulders. And from here itself, you can twist from the left side. You can hold the armrest. If you're having a chair with the armrest, you can hold the armrest. Let's look back so that you feel the stretch in your spine and the sides. Stay there and keep breathing normally. And from here itself, let's move on to the other side. If you are not having a chair with an armrest, you can even rest your palm on your thighs close to the knee. It is completely okay as long as you feel the stretch on your sides and the spine. And from here itself, let's come back to the center. So you can just place your left palm on your right thigh. Your right arm will be next to you. So as you inhale, lift your right arm up and let's bend onto our left side and let's keep our gaze diagonally on your right. Let's hold over here. And as you exhale, bring your right arm down. Let's keep our arms by our side. As you inhale, lift your arms up. Lengthen your spine, join your palms together. Keep sitting tall. Keep your spine straight, biceps should be either touching your ears or they will be behind your ears. But you have to do as much as you can. Let's hold in this pose for a couple of seconds. And as you inhale, let's bend onto our right side. Exhale, come back. Inhale, let's bend to the left side now. Exhale, come back. And as you bring your arms down, relax the entire body. And now we'll be doing a forward bend. So for that, you can come a little closer to the edge of your chair. So your feet are planted on the floor. So lift your arms up. As you lift, you need to inhale. And as you exhale, bring your arms down by your side. As you inhale, lift your arms up and as you exhale, bring your arms down. And now you can go back to the same position. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be holding our right wrist using our left palm, but that too behind your chair. So your arms will go behind you. You have to hold your right wrist and you have to push your chest and spine. Out. So spine will be pushed in, in fact, and the chest will be pushed out. So that you feel the stretch in your spine, chest, upper, middle, lower back. This position. And let's release our arm. And let's place our right foot on our left thigh. So, you can adjust your body as per your height. I'm tall, so I have some little closer to the edge of my chair. Yeah, yeah. So, what we'll be doing is we'll place our right palm on our right thigh. Your left palm will be on your right ankle. Now, you have to gently push your thigh down and stay there for a couple of seconds. So that you feel the stretch in your pelvic region around your hips. Let's stay away. 
down. And release. And let's move on to the opposite side. So you have to place your left leg on your right thigh. And the right palm on your left ankle, left palm on your left thigh close to the knee. So we will gently push our leg down towards the floor. And just feel the stretch around the pelvic region. And you remember that you have to keep smiling during the entire session. And let's release our left leg. Keep sitting over there on the edge of the chair. Now you have to place your right palm on the floor right between your feet. Your left arm goes up. And let's look up towards the left palm for a couple of seconds. You have to keep breathing normally. No need to retain your breath in the poses in the asana. Let's switch on to the opposite side. You can place the left palm on the floor, the right arm goes up. So your right arm should be completely perpendicular. And let's bring our right palm on the floor and let's come up and let's relax. So this was all about chair yoga. I hope you liked our video. And if you have any questions of any sort, please don't hesitate to write down in the comment section below and we will surely answer all the queries. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Namaste. day. We thank you for new ideas introduced, for old ideas expressed, for all of the love and joy that we find in this place. We give you grateful thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.